My name is Sam Otten, and I am joined by Jason Book, the comic book and comic book related uh, media aficionado from Canada. And we're going to be running through our top five comic book movies from the kind of early era of comic book movies, which we are calling 19. 19- 78 to 1997 and we're uh, we've really been thinking about comic book movies because we feel like with 2015 coming to an end fantastic four was just released and it looks like it's going to bomb pretty hard to kind of close things off in 2015 um but looking ahead to 2016 it looks like a new era might be coming up with batman v superman x-men apocalypse civil war uh it seems like stuff is really kind of ratcheting up to possibly a new area with the dc cinematic universe getting going so we're reflecting back on the previous eras so um, we're going to go 1978 to 1997, our top five comic book movies. So starting off with number five, we've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Jason, what are your memories of this uh, live action movie? Well, that came out in 1990, right? Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, so I would have been 15, so I probably loved it at the time. <laughs> I watched this Turtles documentary on Netflix last night, and it really showed how hard that movie was to make with animatronic you know, people inside the suits and it was, had some Jim Henson work in there and they really tried to keep it dark. So you couldn't actually see the little eye slits of the guys in the costumes. So for when it came out, it's pretty well done. Obviously it's dated a bit, but I remember it being, you know, pretty entertaining. And, you know, you got to remember it's a movie that was for kids too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was also younger at the time. I had a lot of fun with it. I was a turtle fan from the cartoons and then to see it in an actual legitimate movie, um, that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, before you have the CGI, um, for them to actually be able to have six-foot turtles that could do martial arts was pretty cool. I mean, I think they yeah. pulled it off. Definitely for the time they pulled it off. Yeah. It doesn't quite stand up, but um, it was fun. And, and for what it was, I think it's, it's definitely one that we can put on the list. Mm -hmm. Next up at number four, we have uh, Men in Black, which a lot of people don't even think of as a comic book movie, but this one is uh, you know spun out of the pages of some comic books. So what do you think of Men in Black? Well, I haven't seen it in a while, but um, I did, you know, remember that it was a comic book, but I've never read it. I think if I read the book, I'd probably come at it in it with a different kind of point of view. But to me, it kind of just reminds me of a Will Smith movie. Not that that's a bad thing, but it doesn't really have that comic book feel to it. But it was definitely a crowd pleaser and a good, you know, box office success, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, big hit for sure. Um and I think, too, for me, Men in Black and The Turtles, you know, they're both based on comic books, but they both, I think, really changed the tone. Mm. So the comic books were actually doing some pretty gritty, uh, dark stuff in both of those books, are, in my understanding. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to yeah. bring it to the public, I think the movie studios at the time thought that, oh, we'll, we'll make it more fun. We might have it appeal to kids or we might have it appeal to just like the summer movie crowd in the case of Men in Black. Um, and so it's not till later that we might get some things that are more true to the spirit of the comic books. Um, but Men in Black, you know, this one I think is, is a big hit movie. This one I think stands up pretty well. To me, it's, it's a fun watch even now. Um, so that one I think is a good one. And I think it opened up people's eyes to the fact that there are more comic books out there than just Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, and, and kind of the main ones that you think about. Yeah, that's true. I'd agree with that as well. Number three, we've got kind of a cult classic, uh, The Crow, Brandon Lee's final film here, uh, marred with some tragedy, but really a pretty stylistic achievement, one that has a very cool visual style, uh, a soundtrack that's kind of memorable. Um, so I know you're a big fan of The Crow, so what are your thoughts on this movie? Yeah, I loved it. I mean, it's got quite a different look from the original comic, um, but the fact that it was Brandon Lee... Um, made it really cool. I mean, the guy could have gone on to do a lot, um, possibly even better films. Um, but I really enjoyed that. They got, they nailed the tone of it just right. The music was great. The action was good. You had good bit actors in it as well from other movies. And it just like a lot of good comic book movies. It's not just a good comic book movie. It's just a good movie period. And, um, it's definitely hasn't dated too much and it's still uh, good to watch today. Yeah. This one I think holds up. I think, because of its style so even if it's not a modern style it had such a clear sense of style that yeah. i think it does hold up yeah uh and this one i mean is is kind of 300 or it's 180 degrees from men in black because men in black is like okay let's take this comic book and let's make it a will smith summer blockbuster big hit you know broad appeal yeah. the crow is like no we're gonna actually go in this kind of pretty dark direction 
uh, revenge, you know, kind of story, mm -hmm. and uh, not going to go for mass appeal, uh, and yeah. but do something I think pretty artistic with it. So I give him a lot of credit for that. Yeah, definitely. All right, you can probably guess our number two and number one movies because uh, these are some some big ones for this early era of 1978 to 1997. So uh, we could have put them either way, but we went ahead and put Batman, the Tim Burton original, at number two. So your thoughts on Batman? This one's a classic and very well known. Oh, yeah, I loved it. I mean, you know, now some people forget how awesome it was because we were treated to those really – excellent Nolan films but for when that came out that was a huge deal like this was pre-internet and everything and I remember like you know I think it came out before school was over that year like leaving school early to go watch it in a matinee downtown and it was like a basement movie theater it was just perfect and I, I was just blown away from when the trailer came out from months before to the final you know scene of the movie I loved it the Prince music really dates it but Michael Keaton was a great choice, and Jack Nicholson was a great Joker, and Tim Burton was an excellent choice for director. So what else can you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one, so people will debate how well it holds up. I think you're right that the music does date it. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think there's some other things that don't quite hold up, but there are such strong visuals. Like there are you know, oh, yeah. some images with Batman or some things with the Joker pulling out his huge you know, pistol. Or there's just these images where once you see them, they're kind of just burned on your brain forever, or at least for me they are. Yeah. Um, and so that's pretty cool for a movie to do that, right? Because there's so many movies where I watch them and then a couple weeks later I can't even remember mm. anything from them. But Batman put up put some iconic images onto the screen. Sure did. And things that people would kind of forever associate with Batman. And it really brought comic book movies to another level too. Oh, yeah. um, it, it I think really raised the stakes kind of in the middle of this 1978 to 1997 era that we're talking about. So uh, a lot of credit goes to it for that. Definitely. All right. So number one, uh, we're going to go back to 1978. This was the movie that we have starting our era, and this is Superman the movie, uh, a movie that you know basically was the producer's idea of oh we can take this superhero comic book character and we can actually put some money behind it and have a big blockbuster hit at the theaters uh, comic books aren't just for kids we can have it you know with this broad appeal so Superman the movie is our number one comic book movie for this era what are your thoughts well you know it really was the one that started it all um, you know it did amazing things uh, Christopher Reeve was kind of a nobody to us anyways the general public and it was the first comic book movie where this guy became the character. He just nailed it. Um, everything was great in the movie. My only complaint about Superman 1 and partially with 2 is that, you know, Gene Hackman was an amazing actor. He's won Oscars and things. And his portrayal of Luthor is kind of not what it could have been. Because if they really let him cut loose and have him be a little bit more menacing, who knows how it would have turned out. But that's really a minor quibble. It is a classic. Some people will say it's dated. Um, you know, there's parts where Superman changes quickly out of the phone booth and a pimp tells him he has an awesome outfit while he flies up to save Lois. I love stuff like that. It reminds me of when it came out, but Superman goes throughout all times. And, you know, even when Man of Steel came out, it was a good movie, but you really have trouble not thinking of the original Superman when you think of Superman. That's how well it was made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm a Superman fan. Uh, I'm more of a Superman fan from the comics and now with the Man of Steel, the new era. Um, but I definitely give this movie the credit that it deserves. Um, the you know Some of the camp elements or some of the humor elements I think are okay. I'm kind of with you where I wish that the humor could have been done without putting so much of it onto Luthor. Because yeah. when you make your villain a big part of the humor... It also kind of weakens your villain a little bit, I think. Sure. Um, but, you know, they, they kick things off, and we've had now, you know, decades to figure out, well, not well we, but the movie industry has had decades to figure <laughs> out how to kind of do even better with villains. Um, so that's that's something that, you know, could maybe be improved. Some people, you know, who are from the current generation will see Superman the movie, and they'll say, like, well, that flying still doesn't look that great. But at the time, people, audiences were very impressed with the flying. And sure. in terms of the movie makers, they were inventing those techniques as they were making the movie. Like they had, oh, we need to do this shot. We need to do that shot. Well, we need to get a creative team together to invent some strategy right. for actually pulling off that flying move. 
Yeah, it was like so, Star Wars that way. I mean, it wasn't CG. Yeah. It was a real guy flying. So, I thought what they did at the time, I give them a lot of credit for that. Um, there are some parts where I'm kind of like, okay, now, now looking at it from a modern lens, I cringe a little bit, but <laughs> overall, it's kind of a fun movie that if you, if you go along with some of the camp and the humor, it's just fun. Right. Um, you can, we can still debate about turning back time at the end. Yes, totally, <laughs> That's, that's totally. maybe the part that's a little bit hard to get over. One thing that's awesome about it too is it's probably, you know, except for the Batman 60s movie, one of the first comic book movies, and the music was amazing. John Williams just nailed it. Obviously, he had done it with Star Wars the year before, but man, like talk about taking something with the music and really kicking it up to a different level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's also one thing too where it's like they, uh, I heard in the commentary, I think it was for the movie, mm -hmm. that they really made three movies. They made Krypton at the beginning, then they made yeah. Smallville and like Young Clark, yeah. uh, and then they made the kind of, you know, final part where he is Superman and he, you know, saves, uh, you know, foils Lex Luthor. Mm -hmm. So. It's interesting there. I think one thing that could be better is maybe the thread between the three of them. Yeah. And that's one thing that I think Man of Steel actually improved on from the original movie hmm. is Man of Steel had a clear thread from the Krypton parts of it to the final parts of it. Yeah. Um, where this, where Superman, the movie was kind of three disjoint things. Mm -hmm. But um, overall, it's a fun ride. It really kicked things off. It was a big hit. It got people excited about the character in a new way. Like you said, it made Christopher Reeve a star and people thought of him as Superman. Mm -hmm. So... All kinds of great stuff for that movie. Uh, so it tops our list for the top comic book movies, live action from 1978 to 1997. Any final thoughts on the list? No, it's just, uh, you know, it, it's a different time. And really, you know, it's not like today where we take it for granted that there was always comic book movies coming out. So you see between 1978 and 1989, that's 11 years. And I don't think there was any comic book movies of note anyways. I think there was Howard the Duck or something. It was a complete <laughs> bomb you see how much it took to get these movies made. I mean, they were working on making Batman in some shape or form from right after Superman came out until it came out. So it was a big deal, and there might be less, you know, movies to pick from, but there were some real classics in there. Yeah, and we'll see. Uh, we're going to do another video where we do the top comic book movies from 1998 to 2015, and the quality really starts to go up, you know, mm -hmm. where it's it gets a lot harder to pick the five on this on the list for the next era. So that'll be fun too. Yeah, looking forward to it.